How's it going, everybody? This is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition, the home of Collected Editions. And welcome back. I feel like I was just here yesterday. What are you all still doing here? What's what's up with that? Uh, today, I have a group of friends, and together we're going to be talking about some of these latest DC news. And I actually got the assets from DC, the official assets with the content and everything and the cover. So... Uh, and then, of course, talk about DC Finest. We are waiting on Curtis. Uh, and as soon as he gets here, we'll start the party. But I'm going to let these gentlemen introduce themselves first. Dom, to my right, who are you, dude? First time being on the channel. Welcome. Hope you Indeed. Experience. Good. Happy to be here. Uh, Dom of X, content creator, YouTube channel with the same name, X-Men podcast with the same name. I am the assistant editor of comicreleases.com, your one-stop shop for all of your collected edition release dates and much more. Very happy to be here on the channel, Omar, and thank you. Absolutely, man. Thank you so much for putting all the slideshows and stuff together for us, too. Uh, and then below us is this gentleman who's been on the channel before. And who are you, sir? I mean, I wouldn't say I'm below you. I'm just on the bottom of the screen. We're going to be um, below me here in a minute when uh, Curtis gets here. <laughs> giving you a heads up. Just messing. But not. Nah, um, I'm BJ Kicks uh, from Comics Are Dope, uh, the YouTube channel, the podcast, all of the same name. Um, and I'm excited. I don't know if I'm getting the, the warm welcome that Dom's gotten, so I'm a little jealous, but I'm excited. Uh, wait, was it a warm welcome? I was like, introduce yourself. Oh, uh, you see you see the welcome in the comments? Everybody's like, Dom. Oh, oh, jo <laughs> yeah, he, he's got multiple accounts. He's got multiple uh, Something accounts. like that, yeah. I yeah, have like 96 burner Gmails or something like that, yeah. A lot of burner Gmails. That's a lot of burner Gmails. Yeah, that's exactly what he does. Um, let's see. I am going to try to open this with Google Docs and see how it works. Um, and then we're going to see some people here in the comment section and see how they're doing. Or am I putting BJ at the bottom in February? Whoa. whoa. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Crazy, man. <laughs> of course I click on that comment. That is great. BJ kicks. See, look at that. Hey, Dama Beck. Same kind of love. Same time. Like same kind of exclamation marks. Hey, BJ, what's up? What's up, Tyler? And that is in loading. So I'm going to open this with. Uh, I'm going to open this. Let me see how I can open this uh, PDF. These guys file. decided to make the presentation in 8K. Raw ProRes. <laughs> so. Well, 4K Raw ProRes, but you know, that's <laughs> enough. <laughs> what the heck is 8K, man? Uh, I don't think I have anything. Giving Omar exclusives. Yes, yes. Uh, no, they're not. <laughs> I'm a Dom alt account. Sorry. See, that's what I got. You guys should discuss how. Awesome. Surprise stream. Can't wait to hear what you guys' thoughts are. We do have thoughts. Omar, no black and brown unity in February. We do got, we got that. That's why, you know. We got you know Dom over here representing where are you from again, Dom? Uh, California. California, San Francisco, <laughs> baby. California. All right. He's all the way from the West Coast. And then we got the East Coast representation. We do. I do. do. BJ Kicks. And then me, who is somewhere in the Midwest, Kentucky. <laughs> and then somewhere in Canada is Curtis, probably finishing dinner right now because he's having a bland time. So we'll wait for him because I told him I was really excited to discuss this. Um, is it what? Am I not in the Midwest? Oh, Aria, is this are you in the heartland? Is that what they call it? Tornado Valley is what I call it. <laughs> it really is Tornado Valley. I think like, it's tornado he's not Valley. wrong at all on there. Happy birthday, Omar. Well, thank you. Uh, it's not until March 14th, but I appreciate that. Where's the North Coast representation? Okay, I don't know. We don't have a coast. Did you just do the where are you really from? No, I said, where are you from? And I said, California. I even answered for him. I did not assume. <laughs> I did not assume, Aria. Bro thinks Kentucky's in the, is it not in the Midwest? I feel like Midwest the Midwest is, is like, is up a bit north from you. I was, um, I, I was taught in third grade that the Midwest was all the land that uh, Jefferson bought in the Louisiana Purchase. Kentucky's in the South? No, Kentucky's not in the South. Warren schooled these suckers. 
So Warren's from Kentucky. Warren, where are we from? I don't know. Mind. Warren's not the best judge. Omar, Kentucky is the South. Well, son of a... Really? Looks like I'm learning a geography lesson today. I got a Gatorade on the map. And I am blaming Curtis for that because he's late. Kentucky straight up yeehaw land, cowboy. What is geography? That I don't know. Isn't Kentucky one of the original? No, I don't think Kentucky's one of the original 13 colonies. Kentucky in the South? I don't think Kentucky's in the South. I think they were a neutral state during the Civil War. There's What's no up, Omar? What's up, BJ? There is no What's such thing. In the... <laughs> I mean, if I go to a flea market, they may not agree with that. But uh, I'm pretty sure they were a neutral state. Strike one for Curtis. Poor guy. Omar, South Carolina restoring the art or of these epics uh one to be. The epic oh, one. Omar, I have Omar, I have terrible news Dude, about Kentucky. Ahead. No, just like it, it was a, it was in it was not in the Union. It wasn't the, it wasn't a neutral or in the Union state in mm -hmm. 1861. Oh, it didn't exist. It was just land. No, 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 no. I'm talking about there were there were three. There were you got the Union, you had mm -hmm. the Union uh states that had you know and then the confederacy right they were part mm -hmm. of the the latter ah that makes That's sense interesting all i know is like the, the the people that are here to uh talk about dc's finest are getting a geography lesson you ain't in kentucky no more school him dom look dom's schooling us he had bad <laughs> news for me pre-pick kick curtis for that night stalkers epic <laughs> What is the I got a, I, I got a five in AP US history back in high school. So a five out of a hundred? A five out of four. <laughs> a five out of five. What kind of grading system do you all use in California? We use hundreds here in Kentucky. A five out of five. <laughs> Would you get a gold star next? Uh, uh, what is the major export of Kentucky? That would be Don Rosa's Duck Comics. And bourbon and Kentucky fried chicken because it's everywhere. That's it. Damn. Five out of five. Am I the only one that thought that? Is Kentucky education that bad? Kentucky was admitted into to the Confederacy on December 10th, 1861. Now that is long before I got here. Yes. Uh, is Mark it Wade. Bourbon. That's what I thought. Bourbon is the mm -hmm. biggest export. I know it's huge, huge in Japan. I'm going to give Curtis a couple more minutes, and then that's all he gets. Both Abraham Lincoln and Cons Confederate President Jefferson Davis were born in Kentucky. That is also true. So is Jennifer Lawrence. Next. <laughs> what else do you got? I can balance it out, baby. You give me somebody bad, I'll give you some. Muhammad Ali. He was the greatest. Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, Don Rosa. I already said Condition that. Civil War. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what else we got. It's time to move out of Kentucky. The cost of living here is so cheap. It's because nobody wants to be there. Nobody wants to <laughs> yeah, y'all laugh it up. And when you see my basement tour, you're like, oh, man, that basement's so big. Yeah, you ain't going to find that in California. Unless you're rolling in the big money. Yeah, they barely build basements in North Carolina. We've got like this super tough clay. So if you got a basement, you're a high roller because they got to straight up excavate to get you that. Mm. I saw someone in the chat asking if Mark Wade was writing the entire Absolute Power event in the summer. And he is writing every single issue of that event in the summer, which is crazy. Because that's why he's not writing Shazam. BJ, congratulations on 10,000. How's it feel to join the 10K club? Any uh, different than the 9K club? Not that different, except uh, YouTube doesn't tell me when I get more subscribers. Like, it only tells you, like, in 100 subscriber increments. Oh, it rounds it. I forgot about that. Yeah. So, other than that, same great channel. Omar's like uh, Big Basement. I do. There's my buddy, Curtis. What's up? Because of you. I almost got canceled because I don't know that Kentucky <laughs> was in the Confederacy. And apparently, you know, my people, yes, I said my people, <laughs> Peruvians weren't even there. People were assuming that Kentucky was in the South. I didn't know that Kentucky was. Did you know this, Curtis? Sorry, I'm coming into the middle of the conversation. What's going on here? Is Where, where would you consider Kentucky? Is that a northern state, a, a southern state, or would you say it's a neutral state? 
I couldn't even point to it on a map if you ask me. That's okay. I have no idea. Where it is. That's okay. That's okay. I bet. I feel like it's like Midwest. I know where Iowa is because that's where my wife is from. Hey, I feel like it's the same kind of thing. One more time. Where's Kentucky? Say it again for the people in the back, Curtis. Mid Midwest. That's is right. Midwest? That's right. Okay. Midwest. The Midwest. All right. Uh, Curtis, we got a lot of things to talk about. I know you and I are very excited to talk about this. Dom, this is my buddy Curtis. Curtis, this is Dom. I think you've been met. I'm a BJ. big fan of your stuff, Curtis. Thank you. Uh, nice Thanks. meeting you, man. Uh, nice I want to big, uh, give a big thank you to Dom for putting this slideshow together. What about uh, BJ? Was he on? Uh, he was on an Evergreen video with us, right? Yeah, we've been on. Yes. A, yeah, we've been on a thing together. Okay, nice cool. To see nice you again. Excellent. Everybody knows each other. Chat, this is everybody. We're going to get started. Enough of this. Where's Kentucky? I don't care. All right. Let's, uh, let's, let's, let's start. So, um, I got the assets from DC today and I asked mm -hmm. every single question. So a big thank you to Michael and the folks at DC for sending me the stuff. I will be honest. Um, Still quite a bit fuzzy with some things that have not been answered. And, and, and they're still keeping quiet about a lot of things. And I know they're, we're going to talk about some things that have been um, uh, talked about and why there are some missing books in the DC versus Marvel omnibus, which we'll be happy to discuss here. All right. So the first thing that they announced was the DC finest. Let me see. Why am I echoing, echoing, echoing? Is that better? Is that better? Better? Or say that? it twice. You were echoing too. Curtis? Oh. Curtis? I think it's Curtis's mic. Uh, Curtis, uh, what's okay. your... Hit the echo cancellation, brother, on your settings. See if that helps. I don't hear one. Is that it? Is there more echo? We're echo, good. echo. Nope, we're good. Yeah. Good. And Curtis is good. Excellent. All right, let's roll. Okay. So we first heard about this yesterday, and people kept asking questions when we were doing the Evergreen chat. So that's why I decided, hey, I don't need sleep. I just want to, I'll make another video, and I'm going to get my buddy Curtis involved. And then I asked BJ and Dom to join me. So the DC Finest line was announced at Comics Pro, which is this big event that uh, took place this week. Uh, we, and it's not the only announcement that we got, but it is, as far as collected editions, it is one of the biggest announcements mm -hmm. that we've gotten because from the description that we've seen, these are going to be some big books. These are going to be some epic like books, if you will, which we've seen DC do in the past. Uh, we've seen their Bronze Age run in epic collection so much so that the volume numbers were in the back uh that didn't last very long and then lately they've been focusing on compendiums so the lines that are kicking it off are wonder woman origins and omens catwoman lifelines batman year one in year two the flash the human thunderbolt and the coming of superman curtis you're 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 the biggest epic guy that i know when you first saw this line did, you, did it put a big smile on your face? Did you go, oh, my God, this is it. This is it. This is the answer to the epics. Absolutely. I, I think um, the way that I read the wording of these announcements indicated that this is exactly what they're trying to do. I know some people are like, no, nah, no, it looks like they're cherry picking or skipping issues or whatever. But no, I think it absolutely looks like uh, like the, they're just going to copy the format, which I think is fantastic. Uh, Phil Owens. Curtis, you epic trader. Marvel should revoke your Marvel the, the marching Marvel merch. Mary Marvel Marching Marvel. Society. Yes, that's it. <laughs> revoke. Uh, yeah. Oh man. Um. So let's let, let's talk a little bit about this because you're right. It is difficult to see. One of the things that I'm sure a lot of us have noticed. Um. It says it's a large size paperback collection starting at thirty four dollars and ninety nine cents. Dude, I was looking at some of these books. None of these books have a, like, there's no way they're $34.99. These are some big books. We're looking at books that have 500 to 600 pages at the very least. Uh, so let, let's talk about Flash right now. This is a very important era of Flash. And why is that? 
Curtis, do you know what the importance of this is? Oh, yeah. This is the beginning of the Silver Age. A lot of um, historians uh, uh, credit the, the, the first appearance of Wally West as Flash as the beginning of a new era. Okay. So we're not starting with Golden Age. We're not starting not starting with Wally West. We are starting with the Silver Age with Flash. And it's the oh, sorry, Barry Allen. I meant Barry Allen, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's you're you're good. I got you. I got you. <laughs> I'm not yeah. a DC guy. What what are we talking about? Well, um, that's, and I think that's why these are starting great. at 87 instead of 56. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I I know that DC has priced trade paperbacks cheaper than Marvel. But the page count for these to make sense, like, I don't know, $34.99 seems really, really low. I mean, they. I guess it depends on a lot of factors, which is why we're here to talk about this. Uh, now, this one, we don't have the content exactly. We, de uh, we do say the years 1956 to 1961. But that's still yeah, a lot of books. That's a lot of books. We can see on the back of the cover here that uh, The Flash of Two Worlds story from flash what is it 137 is is going to be included in this book mm -hmm. as well as the first appearance here of barry allen so uh, i look i have the the flash silver age tree paperbacks and so i looked at how many pages that is going from the first appearance there to uh to that issue 137 and it's about 620 pages okay so if we're looking this is a really good point i actually like this Maybe it's an introductory price because we've seen companies do that. We saw Image Comics do that with their intro trade paperbacks, right? The volume one is nine dollars and ninety nine cents. Oh, you want the rest? Oh, they're nineteen ninety nine to twenty four ninety nine, right? Yeah, I, I was think that, that that's, that's a good idea. Sure. Mm -hmm. What What do you guys, uh, Dom, BJ? What do you guys think about this? How do we know they're not skipping around? <sighs> well, the wording up here. I have been reading this left and right, left and right, but I think I'm with Curtis. I don't think they're skipping around just based on their mapping. And these are mock-up images, right? right. These books are not going to be that thin unless right. they're using some new paper stock that they found somewhere that is super, super thin. And oh my gosh, maybe that's how they keep it to $34.99. Um, I was looking at, I think it was, um, was it Wonder Woman or one of them has a lot of the collection in there and mm -hmm. it looked like nothing was skipped. They were including one shots and they were including, there was another book. Uh, we'll look at wonder woman here in a second, but they were including everything that I thought fits around that character at that time. It's the wording in this description here. Uh, it says focusing on characters and storytelling genres instead of creators or prior series will give casual fans the chance to discover full continuities mm -hmm. for their favorite characters while offering completists, uh, completist readers an affordable option. So yeah. full continuities and completists is what makes me think that this is not what they were doing before. Mm -hmm. Makes cool. sense. And, and I know there's a lot of negativity when it comes to DC and collected editions because of, unfortunately, they don't have the greatest track record of mm -hmm. starting a line and mm -hmm. finishing it, right? I think... It is a blessing that we ended up with all of Hellblazer, for example. I can't believe they went through all of Hellblazer. But outside of that, I can't think of another line that they stuck to. I mean, and it's not, you know, you got to do with what sells. And if the book isn't selling, then you kill the line. I understand that. So there's a lot of lack of faith happening. But I think this is a really good start. Uh, let me get the super chat really quick from my boy, Jack Ferry. Will we ever get a Chuck Dixon Omni? We already got the Moon Knight. Marvel beat them to it. Moon Knight by Chuck Dixon is out already, man. Volume one. Uh, if you're talking about uh, Nightwing and Robin, no go. Those are compendiums, which leads me to, to the next thing. Like They've been focusing on compendiums. Yeah. Like The milestone mm -hmm. line has been released in compendium format. Does that mean that? Kind of like what Marvel did with their complete collections, just kind of fading out that particular line of focus on big, thick books like this. I, 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 I think would they'll probably do both. Know. I think they'll do both. I will say I'm excited about uh, particularly the Batman prospects in this line because I skipped out on the, uh, the the Dark Knight Detective and Cape Crusader trades. Mm -hmm. So did I. Because uh, yep. I was like, oh, I'll get them in hardcovers, and that never happened. 
So I'm excited to have a second chance at some of that content. What an interesting era to collect for Catwoman. Not the era that I mm -hmm. thought they would go for, but I'm happy for it. I we we've had this before though. Go ahead, Dom. I I'm I'm actually surprised that they're starting off. I guess yeah, with Jim Baylor because we have uh Brew Baker, uh Brew Baker, Darwin Cook out mm -hmm. now. We got the Omni. There's the small digest size line that I also believe Catwoman is getting printed in uh, mm -hmm. as well. So for them to triple dip, I think in that era of Catwoman would probably be a little bit weird. And I think we're already spaced out enough with the, cause they did the complete collections quote unquote of the Jim Balant run a couple of years ago that they never bothered finishing like they did with uh, Aquaman by Peter David. Oh. Um, don't Lantern, don't but... don't don't open up those wounds. Uh... <laughs> but no, we're I, all I'm too just... familiar with the lines they've killed, including the Jim. I think Jim Ballant what got two. two they trees? got he got two, and that was it. The same yeah. with uh, like I got my two volumes of Peter David Aquaman sitting on my shelf, lonely. Never now <laughs> now if you're looking at this, so this does collect the mini series of Catwoman before the Jim Ballant era, so it already has more than the Jim Ballant era, uh, because it's got the what. what who is it? Oh, it's right there. 1989 solo debut by Mindy Newell, mm -hmm. and JJ Birch. Okay. Uh, so looking at this, you know, there, and it's another mock-up cover. I, I really dig the years. I know it's not for everybody. I know people want volume numbers on the back because we've been spoiled by Marvel epics, but with DC, this, uh, to me, this is like DC going, well, this will, this is our thing. We're going to do years instead of chronological volume I, numbers. I, and I think it makes somewhat logical sense, right? Because if you want to make yours like distinct from what the other company is doing, which I do think DC kind of should do anyways, mm -hmm. not to make it too similar to Marvel. I think it's a perfect way of like presenting yourself and also on the bookshelf, you don't need to look at the back uh, okay. for your volume numbers and you can just go, this goes there, this goes there and, and case it all in. I like the years because... They, it even works as a standalone, right? Like if I just want to buy volume two, I can buy that and not feel whack for not having volume one and three. Until your man, or your friends come over and make fun of you for not having volumes five. <laughs> What's wrong with you, BJ? You gotta have the whole set. What about you, Curtis? You're an epic guy. You're used to those epic spines. What do you think of this? Well, I think it's great. I think it's a fantastic way of doing it. Uh, and I'm very accustomed to this type of thing already because I collect a lot of the um, the comic strip uh, collections. Oh, yeah. And right. all of those ones are usually, you know, they're cataloged by date as well. Dick Tracy, uh, it doesn't say volume one on the spine. It says 1931 to 1933. So uh, that's, it's great. I think it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Hold up. They're starting Wonder Woman on 2016. They're starting Wonder Woman with Gail Simone's run. I think that's the next one that's up. So Catwoman, 90s. So look, we're getting a little bit of the 50s and 60s here with Flash, Silver Age. Could I could I add one more thing to Flash, Omar? By the way, if I may, if I may add, yeah. I believe the volume one omnibus of Flash is 850 pages at retail for a hundred dollars. If it were, because it seems like it will have about the same and from like issues collected maybe like 200 or 300 pages less so you're looking at 500 pages of content for we don't know what the price is obviously uh but it's going to be a lot more accessible for new readers if they're going to start off with that point i i just thought if they're if this is going to collect like two-thirds say of silver age volume one i i think like that's that's a lot more affordable for you know the regular person than trying to find omni volume one of silver it age. is um, I, I will say, I, I know I have a lot of viewers that don't like trade paperbacks and I can see a lot of them skipping out on this, but for the same reason that a lot of them skip out on epics, I think it's not epics, oversized. Ep, they're, they're not, yeah, they're not oversized. Mm -hmm. They're not tall. They're going to be thick. I don't know how these, how thick these are going to be. That's the only thing I worry about if they're trying to keep the price point down because the compendiums have been pretty good. Knock on wood so far. As far as the spines not creasing on the ones that I've read, the only one that I've had issue with was Spawn Compendium Volume 3. It cracked on me. Uh, but the new ones from DC, like all the Milestone, the Top 10, the Alan Moore stuff, Tom Strong, those have been holding up pretty good, and I've, and I've read them. Uh, that's the only issue I have with something 
this thick. I mean, you're looking at thickness and, and I'm looking at all the manga omnis that I own with all the creased spines because I like to read. I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not just a collector. I love reading these things. And if you're going to read them, sometimes you're going to get that creased spine, depending on the type of build they have. Um, I, I want to talk, I want to come back and talk about these jumping on points here too. The, the choices they're making. Uh, DC's finest Batman year one and two. You heard it here first folks or not first, but you heard it here together. DC's finest year one and two on the same title. Crazy. Uh, this is a big one. Cause I remember when I, I was in the middle of the live stream yesterday and somebody had posted this, I'm like, how are they going to capture all of that? Cause they were a little bit over a year in between stories. Yeah, and so that, this is this is the uh, the very first post crisis Batman stuff. So let's say they start with Batman four hundred one, and this we can is what see we've been that, wanting an omnibus format. This is yeah. this is what we wanted. Yeah, and and so Batman four hundred one, and then we can see there's Batman four ten on uh, on the cover here. It's the it's the one on the top right. Uh, oh, the one with Two Face and uh, yep. what's the name? Uh, so. Jason Todd. Yeah. So that's 11 issues. Mm -hmm. And then if we go with the first post crisis detective comics issue, uh, 568, and go all the way to the last issue of year two, uh, 576, that's nine issues. So that's 20 issues right there. And then you can also see in the picture that they have Batman annual 11, which is double size. It's about, it's about 22 issues. That's an epic size right there. If it's 22 issues, I really thought there were a lot more. In between year one and year two, because Batman was 401. 401. What? 410 takes us, it, it, it's um, 410 is about a, the equivalent of year two, um, detective comics, of the end of year two, like it's generally speaking, I, I think. Because this is saying so 1986 to 1987. So that's yes. two years that's worth of books, right? Usually with uh, the, the epic collections. Around the 80s is when we're starting to see one or two years because of those annuals. And if there's an annual crossover, they include part of the annual. So was Detective Comics monthly at this time or was it bi-monthly? I want to say around this time, it started coming out bi-monthly. I could be wrong. Uh, let me see what the chat is saying. Uh, year one was 404 to 407, but 401 is what kicks off the post-crisis era with, uh, yeah. what's her name, Magpie on the cover. Yeah. So I'm thinking that should be included. I mean, you obviously use the Frank Miller, or the uh, Mazzucchelli cover, right? You use that. And again, mock-up covers. They could change everything at any time. Stupid question. Is it confirmed these are in color? That was one of the questions I asked uh, my contact at DC, and he said yes. But <laughs> I didn't. There was no like no detailed information if they're going to be retouched or if it's going to like what colors they're going to use. Mm. Will it be the Batman Year One colors, the modern colors, or the classic co colors? There's nothing because they are still up in the air about all of this. Uh, doesn't this envelop? It would. It would have to envelop Second Chances because. That's the Jason Todd storyline. That's what I was thinking. Maybe it, maybe this has more than 22 issues in it. And yeah, 401 is part yeah. of the Legends event. But 401 is the very first Batman post-crisis, if I'm not mistaken. Has DC ever problem. done a Legends omnibus with all the chapter times like Batman 401? No, they have not. But what type of paper are they using? That's another question that I asked and no, nothing. I, I really... Like, this is at the beginning stages. They're super hyped for this. Uh, and they're just trying to get people excited, right? And so the planning stages are next. And the actual... <laughs> Getting the team together to map it. And then, of course, the... Okay. Now we print it. Where? <laughs> <laughs> um, but in... Uh, oh, my God. This is the book I've wanted in an omnibus format for years. Mm -hmm. this is the answer that i've been wanting for collected editions and it's amazing i know it's not for everybody i know it's not an omnibus but i think it's still amazing nonetheless that we're finally 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 getting it after all these years that collected editions have been around 
And we, if they, if they kind of gave us a tease a few years back when they did the Dark Knight uh, Detective and Kate Crusader trades, which I think that covers a lot of this era, right? But they skipped over year one, didn't they? they? Did. Like they didn't, they, did. they didn't they did. include it. No, yep. Because year one is such a big thing to DC that yeah. they, yeah, year you one just and have year to get two on have own. never been together in a collection ever. Like yeah, those first cool. first two years of Batman have never been together in a collection, which is crazy. Always an instigator. I wish Jose Villarubia was in the chat right now. <laughs> 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 that dude loves. He gets a little overboard though. Uh, all right, the big. This one's huge. This is the big. This is like this is the one that we have the entire collection. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So we have Action Comics one through twenty five. The first five issues of Superman, and then New York World's Fair Comics number one. Have any of you done? I mean, we're looking at thirty. Uh, this is the beginning, right? So thirty eight to nineteen. What's it say? Nineteen forty. Mm -hmm. Have any of yeah. you done the the mapping on this one, like compared to an omnibus? I know. So Curtis I have the. Again, I have the trades of the the Golden Age Superman that has this content, and it's about a hundred. It's a uh, one and a half of those books. It's again about six hundred pages. Jesus, that's crazy. Mm. Okay, it's about yeah. So then I'm asking, like, Batman has to be probably the one that's starting at thirty four ninety nine, and everything else shoots up in price from that. I still, I still think because Batman has a lot more than twenty something issues. Just. Those first two years of Batman had a lot of comics coming out, but I don't know. The Golden Age Superman Omnibus Volume One um, had Action Comics one to thirty-one, the World's Fair number one, the nineteen forty World's Fair, and then Superman one through seven. So, how many well, pages is that? Uh, it's not I know Curtis. Story. Curtis, you said that this one would be about six hundred or something pages. Yeah. So we're not we're not going to be looking at letter pages. I assume they're going to have the same. I mean, it would be a freaking awesome if they collected the letter pages and <sighs> page count on the omnibus was eight hundred sixteen pages. Okay, so if you take away, oh wait, that's Silver Age. My bad. We find no, I think I think um, I think Superman Golden Age Volume Number One had seven hundred eighty something pages. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, we're looking at about 600 pages. Mm -hmm. If if they don't include a lot of the extras, not that they had a lot of extras, and not that DC really does a lot of extras in their uh, Golden Age and Silver Age omnis, but hmm. I I we don't know any specifics right now, and and neither does the collected editions team. I I asked if it was gonna be recolored or remastered, and they. All they said, yes, in color. <laughs> That's pretty <laughs> much it. The only way that it'll be original art is if they can find the original art to uh, to 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 make new versions of. So the reason it's redrawn is because they just didn't have quality material that existed. I love Eric's comment. As exciting as the news is, it seems like DC was not prepared for the community to have this sort of rabbit reaction, and they're having to build the car while driving. Um, what are they not prepared about? I don't. Uh, they I, seem. They I seem think. I think they've enough. been having this in the bag for a long time, just with the presentation. I think what he's meaning is like the detailed information as to like what's collected. Whenever, whenever we saw like Marvel epic collections, and it's going to be difficult not to compare it. But come on, let's just do it. <laughs> Rip the band aid off. Well, when Marvel announced yeah. the epic collections, we were all confused too. We were like, "What is this?" But the beauty of that announcement to me as a collector, I remember was they started with Iron Man. Uh, what was it? The Enemy Within, right? Yeah. And to me as a collector, I was like, oh, that's not in my omnibus by Michelini and uh, John Romita Jr. Huh. Well, I guess I'm going to get that and then wait for the omnibus to come out. That was the smartest marketing thing that because a lot of us were like that. I'm just gonna get that as a placeholder and mm. wait for the omnibus to come out. And 10 years later, I'm drowning in epic collections, which I love. But <laughs> um, I feel like that was something that Marvel did, and they announced because they announced the content, like they were ready. Like, this is more of like here's the idea that we have. I think is what uh most people are a little bit worried about, right? 
I think it's great. I think it's amazing. And I'm excited for it. And I think everybody should be excited for it. But I also understand people being a little weary of DC announcing things and then dropping the ball later on and not finishing it. Um, what about you guys? Like, honest reaction. Curtis, you're excited, right? I, I can tell. Oh, yeah. I'm excited. I have, I've never been a, a DC guy like I am a Marvel guy for sure. I mean, I, I've bought all the, 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 you know, the big names DC stories, but I'm ready to dive into something like this. I've been waiting for for DC to curate a library for me like like this. Uh, and I so I, I'm all in. I'm all in. <laughs> Shop that sick, my dude. I uh, hope they add second chances to Batman year one and year two. I think I think it will be. That's why I'm thinking that it will be a little bit more than just than just what, the 22 issues or yeah i think what about you dom when you saw this get announced how what did you think I, i'm always in for more affordability just because it gets more people to read comics i understand mm -hmm. like for me i mean i love omnibuses i have a lot of them but for a lot of people it might not be the easiest way to break into comics and and whatnot i think if you have something like this where you, you got you, you're gonna get new readers in especially too with the batman stuff like having those two collected in one i think mm -hmm. it's a great idea to just try to get more people to read your own material so i'm i'm all in for it and if it if it brings more readers in i'm 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 100 sold on it so the question is that they say when these are going to be coming out as i think in their press yes. Yeah, press release says they're starting in November. Yeah, so that means starting. so August, we don't know how many are going to come in November, but yeah, at least one. We got a while. So Ju July, August solicitations will have these books for the first time, and we should have the content and the price and the final cover by then. Uh, Wonder Woman, Origins and Omens. This is the one that starts with. Uh, 2007's The Circle, which is the beginning of Gail Simone's run. Mm -hmm. Right. Which interesting. And did she that begin? She started with issue 14? Yeah, yeah, because it was after, let's see. Picard it was after uh, Heinberg, Heinberg, Dodson, yeah. and Jay Torres, who was on like as a weird fill in for the next third, like 10 issues. And then Gail Simone got on. Wasn't it Jody Picot? That Jody also? I think, yeah, yeah you're Yeah, you're right. And then we got Gail Simone, and Gail Simone stayed on the book. Honestly, I think if this book is as big as, what are we looking at, 2007 to 2009? That could be the entirety of its omnib on the of the omnibus, right? Hold on, let me let me look um, really quick. The last issue on that on the cover is issue 34, which is I'm told is a two parter. So if we go from issue 14 to 35. And then we also have that Brave and the Bold issue, and we have that Wonder Woman Grace issue. That's about 24 issues, which is, you know, probably around 550 pages. And I pull my old man specs out here, so I'm just going to zoom in. Um, I, yeah, this is like, what I love about this is that this is not like, the omnibus though because the omnibus was wonder woman by gail simone omnibus and this features things like that countdown issue or the brave and the bold that were not by gail simone so yeah Which okay. makes it seem like epic collections yeah absolutely i do like that you know these are going to be more affordable than omnis right like when i got in Wonder Woman by Gail Simone was out of print, but that was the story everybody was recommending. I think probably just because it was out of print and like highly sought after, right? But this, you know, whether it's $34.99 or like 50, right? Like that's a lot mm -hmm. better than hey, here's a hundred dollar book. Compendiums are what $59.99? Yes. It's about yeah, like about 50 that. to 60. I do want to in the um I may take a poll in the uh, in the stream to see how people feel about big books like that. But th those are your oh, five. Hold on. Just just wait a second. You said uh, compendiums are eighty. Uh, sixty nine ninety nine. 
or, or 69 I believe, million, I believe. So 70. And they're, they're, they're usually about, they're about 900 pages or so. I think the, I have sweet tooth and that one is about 900 pages. Mm -hmm. So if we cut that in half, I mean, that's still, um, so yeah, $35 for 600 pages. If they keep the Sorry, super 59. thin paper. 99 i thought it was 69.99 go go oh, ahead no, wow. that's even cheaper uh, i'm saying that the price probably checks out if they use the same super thin paper that they use because the paper in that sweet tooth compendium compendium is very thin um if they use that same thin paper uh then the spines are probably equivalent to the epics and the price point is probably 35 bucks so i think that i think the math checks out there even with a 600 page book Using that thin paper, right? It's, okay, uh, even the compendium paper isn't super thin, though. We're not talking Bible thin. You know what I'm saying? Well, not not Bible thin, but it's it's definitely thinner because I I mean maybe they're not all that way. I'm only basing it on the Sweet Tooth compendium because that's the only one that I have, and it was it's very thin paper. Jesus, thirteen hundred pages at fifty nine ninety nine. Yeah, the uh, Robin by Chuck good. Dixon is eleven hundred pages for 59.99 okay then you cut that in half and uh -huh. that's about 600 bucks 600 pages and you're saying yeah. 35 dollars. 600 pages to, yeah that's about right i think the thinnest one is the kyle rayner compendium which is 704 eight pages for 60 bucks with the printing error on the side as a lot of people like to point out oh the compendium <laughs> yeah compendium. <laughs> that's so bad um <laughs> Curtis, I think you're right. I mean, I, it, it's not the best paper, but it's doable, right? I mean, it's it it can work. It can, it's flimsy as hell. Um, yeah, it keeps the it, but it keeps the price point down, mm -hmm. and it means that uh, they can pack more onto a, a freight as well, more more units onto one freight. So shipping costs can keep down it, and so they keep that keeps that all keeps the cover price down. Crazy. Okay, maybe they figured out a way to do it. All right. Um, we'll come back to the to the DC's finest because I do want to keep talking to the panel about those. Uh, but the other things they've been announcing were the Else Worlds. I'm excited about that because for a while we've had the DC Black Label line, but the return of Else Worlds gives me hope for that. There's just something really special. Maybe it's my childhood. Whenever I see that branding of the Else Worlds logo, Curtis, were you? I know you weren't that big of a DC guy, but were you? Do you have like a favorite Else Worlds story? Oh yeah, um, I really like Gotham by Gaslight, and Classic. Superman Red Sun is very good. Yeah, I, the Else Worlds titles I picked up because um, I love What If as well, mm -hmm. and. Uh, you know what else worlds always just are riffs on where they were at least back in the day oftentimes riffs on the origin stories of these characters that i knew just because they're larger than life characters so i yeah it's great to see them coming back mike that cover for green lantern is good i like it too um i, I wonder who the artist is on that one because it looks they're all on the bottom omar oh yeah <laughs> I, I got excited. I thought it was um, what's her name? Um, she used to do Street Fighter covers and Buffy the Vampire Slayer covers, and then she I think she retired from comic books. Jen Joe Chen kind of looked like that for a minute. All right, let's talk about the big book. Uh, two big books, of course. Uh, so this is the official uh, DC announcement, and again, these are DC books. Printed by DC Comics. So these are not Marvel Comics uh, books. They're not Marvel Comic Omnis. They have Marvel characters, but uh, so glad they changed the cover. Yes. To George Pettis. I love it. Love it. But this collects the classic stuff. So this is the classic DC versus Marvel omnibus. This is the Batman Captain America, Batman Daredevil, Batman Punisher, Lake of Fire, Batman Spider Man, Daredevil, Batman. And oh my God, there's one in here Dark Side and Gal versus Galactus, The Hunger. I love that story. Daredevil, Batman, um, Green Lantern. The John Byrne run, right, Omar? Yes. Mm. And, and, and it actually, it's funny because I don't know if you have the, um, 
was it not World's Finest? It was the Elseworlds Batman and Superman collection. There's a story in there that kind of ties into the story that he was telling here, the John Byrne story of uh, the Dark Side and Galactus. Uh, Incredible Hulk versus Superman is a freaking classic. Marvel and DC presents featuring the Uncanny X Men and New Teen Titans. Are you kidding me? In an oversized hardcover mm -hmm. format for the first time, like in an omnibus format. We've had it released in trade paperbacks. I think uh, all of us nerds still hold on to our trade paperbacks. But um, it's just nice to see it in a big oversized hardcover format. Mm -hmm. Silver Surfer Superman, Spider Man and Batman. That's the one by Bagley. Uh, Superman versus the Amazing Spider-Man number one, and then Superman Fantastic Four. Uh, we I'm are going to talk about this because there's no way that we cannot not talk about it. I, I'm not disappointed that being a big Generation X fan that I am, I'm disappointed that the oh, Wildstorm Wild characters, Storm. like the Wildstorm's owned owned by DC, is it not, or part of the DC family? They yeah, are, but I think but that's part of the, the Marvel the stuff. Time. Like Marvel printed the Wildcats versus X Men stuff, and I think the DC Gen thirteen or Gen thirteen and Gen X stuff fell into that too. So well, they couldn't get everything, what? but they got. I mean, they got a good chunk of they it. They got too. they got a good chunk of it. I mean, yeah. this is really good. I uh, also not included in here is JLA versus Avengers, which is a big one. I know True. a lot of people want I, it. I think that's, um that's a that's another that's another legal loophole that. I don't know. One day, maybe. Yeah, wondering if they'd like reprint an absolute format of that because, like, what I heard from folks around was that Mary Javins was the one who spearheaded uh, all the DC Marvel together stuff in, in the first place when they did the um, Hero Initiative campaign to get uh, JLA Avengers back in print. So hmm. maybe, maybe we get something in the future. She organized. I have no idea. I would love that. Yeah, I will say out of the two of these, this is the one I'm most excited about. Just, um, I guess we'll get, we'll talk about it. The issues thirteen of Heroes Reborn. Yeah, that would I think that would be a Marvel thing. That would no, be a Marvel. But, thing. but we're getting Marvel issues in this DC version. Yeah, Marvel it's Army. really weird, man. Like I remember when I talked to David about this, and he was like, "Yeah, that's a DC book. That's why it's being leaked." <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it is really interesting how all that works right uh so the dc versus marvel also comes with the amalgam omnibus which of course has the big big clash from the 90s if people voted if you remember those those votes your yeah. votes counted oh yeah DC versus marvel one through four all access one through four i, I could have done without that uh um, matt Bay. Bruce Wayne, agent of Shield. You got the thing? Yeah, I got my ballot here. Yeah, Dang. man. Those were the days. And, uh, right into this AOL email account to vote for uh, <laughs> your favorite. <laughs> Love it, Omar. If you read Jim Lee's statement about the Amalgam direct market cover, he said he is now working on a DC versus Marvel Omni direct market cover as well. That's going to be tough to beat George Pettas, though. If you got George. I don't know. Go to Tim goats, Lee man. You gotta one. choose it. The one thing uh, that's odd to me is, and maybe it was just the way he notated, it, but like if you look at the the Jim Lee art, it says the amalgam A cover and the amalgam B cover, which mm -hmm. to me implies so, that there's two direct market variants. So there's a connecting. No. Oh my goodness. Maybe, maybe it's because uh, maybe it's a note to the inker. Maybe. I mean, or, it's or the way to, or the way to print. Spread. There's all these little artist notes on there too. Um, and of course, there's a couple of books that are missing, and I know that we're going to talk about it, but uh, let's talk about what's in here. Um, Unlimited Access 1 through 4, Bat Thing, Bruce Wayne, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. number 1, Br Bullets and Bracelets 1, Challengers, Challengers of the Fantastic, Doctor Strange Faint, Iron Lantern, Legends of Dark Claw, Lobo, The Duck, <laughs> Speed Demon, Spider Boy, Super Soldier 1, Thorian, uh, and the New Asgods, and X Patrol. And more, plus a host of behind-the-scenes stuff. Um, so there are a couple of issues missing, mm -hmm. and I think in the chat people are already talked about it. And what what is missing from here are the issues that were written by uh, a, a uh, 
a comic book writer that has served prison time for doing something awful. And also the reason why they pulled the Green Lantern trade paperback volume two. But I find that move really weird because if we're going to put pull Gerard Jones stuff out of here, that JLI Omnibus Volume 3 that's coming out has like 35% of that stuff is written by him. And okay, so it's a Marvel thing. Well, Marvel's releasing the saga of Will, uh, Simon Williams, which also has stuff written by Gerard Jones. So Does it? it? Yeah. You sure it does? I'm pretty sure I can go. It, uh, I think I got it already. I'm going to go get it. Um, I didn't think that they had any issues from that series in that book. I thought they did from the 90s, right? Hold on a second. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. <laughs> what? Uh, this is the first time I think that all um, that. What? Which one is it? The the third crossover unlimited access has mm -hmm. been collected, because uh, the first, of course, the first series was collected in that first trade, and then all access was collected as well. But then, never has unlimited access because that one didn't actually have any. Um, it, that was, it didn't, it wasn't accompanied with actual amalgam issues. Right. So they never collected that one. It's just these four. There you go. You got them. Yeah. Those right there. That is the first time that's been collected. Uh, maybe you're right, Curtis. Maybe it's a 1986 one shot, which they've had collected before. And yeah, doesn't have any of the 90s stuff, which is a shame. Uh, cause it also I has like Peter David stuff in there. Um, now, I think that there is, um, it might be a Disney thing rather than a Marvel thing, because I know that Disney has a pretty st strong stance on this, and um, there there's one episode of The Muppet Show that they didn't put on Disney+, Plus because the, the guest star it was charged for the same thing. So hmm. uh, it might be, you know, it might be from on high uh, dictated that they got to they can't have it and then you know if that's part of the con the contract the only way that they're going to agree to have a partnership like this is if those ones are left out then dc has to say well either we get most of it or we get none of it what should we do so when i was uh when i was talking to my contact at dc um he was very vague about it and he was like well we're still working things out it's he did say it wasn't going to be the whole thing some things are going to be missing uh, I know everybody's different. I and I respect everybody's opinion. You know, you may not want to purchase something that is written by him. Um, but I think taking that away sucks. Uh, because you know there was a whole team that worked on the book together. You have Jeff Matsuda on artwork on the uh, Magneto and the Magnetic Man, and. Yeah, two issues isn't a deal breaker. You know, I'm still going to get it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then you take your two single issues and just like stick them on the inside cover. I mean, the Micronauts and the X Men isn't collected in the third omnibus. So I think the, the same good kind thing, of thing. It's, it stinks. A lot of this amalgam stuff, like if you can find it, you can find it pretty cheap. Yeah. So if it's just those two it's issues true. and you really want to read them mm -hmm. that bad, like you can find them. Hmm. Do it quick because the price will jump up on those <laughs> <gonna say. laughs> Um, And the other thing is, is like, most of it wasn't that good. No. Most Come of on. It, it I was loved fun. it. I, it was yeah. fun. It, I liked it. Yeah. But nostalgia yeah. goes a long way for me. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't like this stuff up here. This stuff was mm. really good compared to the stuff mm. that we got in Amalgam. I'm not saying Amalgam was awful. Just it was a, it was different. It was definitely the nineties. Yeah, I did. A yeah, and it was it was a gimmick, but I loved the concept and uh, just the the like they did. They went a long way to make you believe reading those issues that uh, these comics always existed and have a huge history. Like the little editor notes that referred to comics mm -hmm. that didn't exist, and the letter pages that were yes. completely made up that referred to the last issue, which didn't exist. That was fun. Like it was, mm -hmm. it was so, so good. It was really, really well put together. Um, let me 
look at this comment right here. Uh, so is this line drawn specifically at convictions then? Because Marvel's printing stuff by Jason Latour, Cameron Stewart, Warren Ellis, and they've copped to harassment. Scott Lobdell too. I think there is a big difference, and I'm not saying one crime is bigger than the other, or if any crime was committed. And this is also a comic book channel, so I don't really mm -hmm. like talking about these things. But when we're talking about the things that Gerard Jones did compared to he served prison time yeah. that's a, it's a yeah. big difference yeah it's a conviction um, but it's also like you know an offense that's considered mm -hmm. especially heinous now and, and again this is america right because we've seen that in manga too like there's manga ka that have done that but in japan it's different the law is different they didn't serve any prison time they got a fine that's it and american publishers still publish their things they just don't ever talk mm -hmm. about who the manga ka are because it's a business, right? Mm -hmm. Um, but those two missing issues to me, they're not a deal breaker. Mm -hmm. Would I like them in there? Yeah, absolutely. It would have been nice, but it's not a deal breaker to me, and I don't think it should be a deal breaker to anybody. If you're like, if you're thinking about getting this, if this is nostalgia to you, when is the next time they're gonna do this? Exactly. We don't know, probably never. And the bought. characters are still the characters are still represented as well because. Um, both JLX and Magneto and the Magnetic Men had issues um, right. in the second age yeah. of Amalgam, and those issues are going to be in this book. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I bought all these in single issues thinking that we'd never get something like this. So I have a custom omnibus. <laughs> so <laughs> nice. I never thought we would get this. Yeah, never. I think it's something to jump on, especially, you know, for whatever extras they're going to put in the back. Like, I assume we've never seen them before. Mm -hmm. What I really want, I really, and I don't know if they can do this, but they had, there was a great set of amalgam trading cards, and mm. they did a whole lot to introduce even more mashup characters and expand the, the universe or whatever. Like, let's, I want to see a whole section in the back. Oh, you mean like, like you, man, you love all those extras. I, you, you, I, 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 I do. I swear. Um, those extras are the epics have spoiled Curtis rotten. Like I'm, I'm a fan of those two. Uh, I, I don't. <laughs> uh, thanks for cracking me up. Cody. Uh, could DC just delete the writer? I've seen that before. I don't know what kind of contracts or legal contracts people have when they were creating and writing for these companies. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Because then, yeah. I mean, then they're open to lawsuits if they do that, right? It's not its not like an Alan Moore thing where Alan Moore chose to take his name out of Marvel Comics. That was a decision made by Alan Moore. Yeah. Sometimes I, I feel like it's like, I just don't want to give that guy money. Mm -hmm. You know, like. And I don't, I don't know if somebody was asking if they can go to like a charity. That was something that I remember reading a long time ago, but that I, there wasn't really any solid proof behind that, that apparently all the earnings that he would have gotten would go to like some kind of uh, charity, but nothing was ever solid. Right. What do we think the price is going to be? I think the retail price is $150. They're both 150. They're 150 for both the regular and the DM cover. Uh, for both the DC versus Marvel and the Amalgam Omnibus. Now they do have every right to change that at any time. Mm -hmm. They did it for fifty-two when that raised from one hundred twenty-five to one hundred seventy-five dollars. They mm -hmm. did that for Dark Knight's Metal, which went from like a hundred to one hundred fifty. Uh, they have every right to push this up to one seventy-five or even two hundred if they wanted yeah. to. I think both both Omnis are nine hundred sixty pages. Uh, last time that I checked. Uh, when I was scouring through the uh, stuff on PRH, but it can also get added and also get subtracted. Um, but excited nonetheless. Yeah, this was a this was like so big, but this right here was my high school years. Yeah. Like it was ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, the X the jail, the JLX book that's not in here. I was like, what X Patrol with uh, what was it? Roger Cruz on artwork. Mm -hmm. Am Amazonian. That was a John Byrne book, wasn't it? It was. Yeah. Dark Claw. Jim Ballon. Jim Ballon did Dark Claw, didn't he? And then they did Legends of or the Dark Claw Adventure. What was the mm -hmm. cartoon one called? Legends of Dark Claw? No, Legends Dark of Dark Claw was the was not the uh cartoon, that's the opposite. 
Dark Claw Adventure was Dark the Claw Adventure. That was it, yeah. If you want to figure out which DC versus Marvel Omni to pick up, go check out BJ Kick's video on comics are dope comparing the contents of each. There you go. Thank you for that, com uh, Bunkmaster B. And there's the link. Appreciate that, guys. Omar, do you have a day when you will be revealing the top 20 re uh, uh, Wednesday, I think? It ends tonight, so make sure you go and vote. And then Curtis and I are going to do the reprint polls, kicking it off, I think, on March 7th for Epic Collections. Uh, big thank you to Taylor for building that out for us. Will they ever... Will they reprint JLA Avengers? I, yeah, absolutely they will. But I don't know if it will be this time around or not. Honestly, yeah. that might be a special. That's that's more legal hoops. I think they probably have to jump through mm -hmm. with that specific book, especially now that uh, Perez isn't with us anymore. Um, unfortunately, I would honestly, I'd rather see that as standalone, like reprint the absolute. Oh, that, that would be mm -hmm. awesome. That would be awesome if they reprinted the Absolute Edition. Just because, I, I have it, yeah. but I'm also not a hipster when it comes to owning these things. I want everybody to own it. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I want yeah. Curtis to have really? it on his shelf. Yeah, the Absolute. I have the original issues. Yeah. No, you Same. need the Absolute. <laughs> they push the price too high. The customers cannot afford it. I mean, that's true. But I, I do want to state that they do have the right to market however they want to they can change the price at any time uh will you be able to do announcements for the dc's finest like you do epics who knows and even if you know what even if we even, even if i don't i'll get with curtis and we'll still look at catalogs together and talk about these books because we love them so much even if we don't get advanced looks at them because we're all also going to get that knowledge that curtis brings to the channel maybe the marvel epic podcast itself i forgot mm -hmm. about that. all the mistakes i make and his, you haven't made any today. You showed up late. That was it. But I'm sure not I did. I uh, I said um, Wally West instead of Barry Allen right at That's, the very beginning. So many the, flashes. The first, the first thing I said. You did start that. You did start off that way. Nothing okay. about Vertigo. <laughs> Nothing yet. But I can assume. I wouldn't rule out Hellblazer or Doom Patrol or Invisibles or stuff like that getting in. Especially for the DC finest line. So let's uh, let's go back to that, and then we can talk about this in case people want to talk about this. Uh, let's talk about DC's finest. Somebody was asking earlier what book and what era we would add to this. Curtis, what book and era? I already got mine. Pick when they asked. That's a great like, oh, question. A really good question. And if somebody wants to go before oh. Curtis, because I'm putting him on the spot, by all means, I can go. I don't care. Um, well, I mean, like I said before, I'm very not well versed in DC at all. So I'm. I would like to get. Um, I have fond memories of reading the random issues of of uh, the Triangle Era of Superman. So I would yes. like that in a nice comprehensive collection. Uh, Superboy uh, from that era as well. Um, but I'm happy with Batman year one, year two. I, I do like that era as well. So that's a really good choice. That's that is the Batman where you start. What about you, Dom? Character so, and era. What would you like to see collected? Even, even if you're not familiar with it, because you want to get familiar with it. Oh, man. I'd really like to see both Busiek and John's action comics. In, an, in a nice Superman-ish line or action comics DC Finest line. We are getting that Busick Superman book, which is not this, which but is it's a big this. sticky. Yeah, it's a And thingy. we were getting the absolute of Johns and Frank I think coming in mm -hmm. May. Um, but mm -hmm. I think it would just be nice to have like a companion of both together since they ran alongside each other uh, for you know, that short amount of time. Because um, I have all of the like standard hardcovers for john's frank action comics um would be nice to i don't know get a better upgrade for those oh i can i say i know what i want can i say can i uh, go again sure <laughs> um I, I i want um very old captain marvel the society of evil <laughs> the stuff uh, that probably. they've canceled twice <laughs> yes. so controversial yeah. Curtis, it okay. is, but um, but that story, is, I've I've read it and it's great, and I would love to have a collection of it. Okay, so you want to go there? Yeah, 
I want to go with like the, really the old faucet era. Okay, Fossett. interesting. If they can I even call that DC finest, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I heard it. DC mid. I think uh, I like the choices that they've got here to start off. I think I want to see that Action Comics Weekly era Green Lantern stuff. Okay, that's cool. That's a good one. I like that. Um, for me, I think I want to see you know if, if we can't get the All Star Western era, the Pamiati stuff. Mm-hmm. Those books have been out of print for so long. I like to see them collected in in a DC finest format. They can even start with Jonah Hex, like the classic Jonah Hex stuff that we were supposed to get in omnibus format, uh, that they turn into an oversized hardcover. Mm-hmm. They can do that. I, so yeah, I guess uh, Jonah Hex I think would be a really fun one. Uh, not a lot of stuffs available for Jonah Hex. And if it is, it's out of print. So I would love for that stuff to be collected. Uh, what do you guys think? Honestly, think and, and please in the chat, anybody that's watching, what do you all think of the choices they made for their starting line? These f- five choices, Curtis, as an Epicurean, yeah. what do you think about the years? Like that's a big gap, man. We're talking 1938 to 2009. What, what do you think? You know, I Is it um, a little too you much? were talking. No, not at all. I think you were talking before how Marvel started with the uncollected stuff um, or the stuff that was out of print or whatever. Uh, And I think that was a great thing for them. DC, we already know, doesn't like taking the same kind of risks. So they're starting safe with these options. But we have one Golden Age, one Silver Age, one Bronze Age, one 90s, and one Modern, all all together. So they're starting off this line. Wait a minute. In- What's the Bronze Age? Watch your mouth. What? Is Batman year one not Bronze Age? The 1988? Not- don't say that. Oh, my God. That's like saying classic rock is like Tom Petty and Van Halen. Is it? That's bon classic Jovi. rock, buddy. Bon Jovi, classic rock. <laughs> Is it really Bronze Age? Isn't it? Are we still calling it the Modern Age? Oh God! Please tell me it's not Bronze Where'd... Age. I don't know. To me, to Bronze to me was always like seventies. I think they. they Where, I does think DC, Where does it end? DC markets everything from nineteen eighty six, right before New Fifty Two, as Modern Age. So, well, I take it back. So, but anyway, regardless of that, it's still, <laughs> it's still, it's like the. The 80s then, uh, you know, it's co- it's still covering a very different era. Each one of these books is a completely different era of DC. Mm-hmm. So, and they're all good starting points for each one of these characters. So you, I, I think it's great. Do you think, and this is an honest question, do you think it was a mistake to start with Superman Golden Age and not something a little more modern? 100%. Because we always have that fear <laughs> why Marvel did not start with Silver Age Volume 1, that no way somebody's going to buy that as the first Superman book. What do you think? That's, yeah. Well, and that's the question. Are they going to skip around or are they going to go in order? Because, man, I don't want to have to buy 40 volumes of <laughs> Golden Age and Silver Age Superman before we get to anything. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so I sure hope they jump around and we'll know that. I assume once the second round of announcements for these books come out. That is really, I don't, to me, it's a, it's a big, big, big like year gap, 1938 to 2009. I, I just, I guess like most of the people that are buying these are not going to be like trying to grab them all like comprehensively. Right. This is like something you, you see in an airport bookshelf mm-hmm. or like at Barnes and Noble, and you just grab one that looks interesting to you. So I don't know that the year gap is as big a deal um, for people that aren't yeah. nerds like us. But I do still think that's an odd choice to start with Silver Age Superman, though. Well, that one's gold. Or golden uh, Silver Age. is the, the Flash. <laughs> it, it, I, I don't know. And it's just me overthinking it, right? I would have. I, I would have gone right in the middle with triangle years or something maybe burn yeah. right like mm-hmm. yeah. make, make people want medicine. it and then go well you know i kind of like the look of that on the shelf I, i'd get another volume and the other volume is the golden age volume one you're like i'm not a fan <laughs> of golden age but i like the way that book looks on the shelf and that's how they get you I, and is- like i said i'm overthinking it I, i'm i'm actually more so happy that they're not doubling up on collections that are going to come out in the next year or so 
because DC's over tendency sometimes is to give people formats that they don't they might not want at the moment or they already have and are just pushing it out again. So to have all of these books that might be like some of the, you know, the the stuff in the future they're not, you know, planning on printing them. It's it's cool to have all of these out in a timely fashion where it's you know, it it's all coming out in that 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 form. So very happy with that. Um, out of curiosity, and not to call you out, but I, I saw a couple of comments like this. Why are you disappointed with the uh, DC Finest? Just out of curiosity. I mean, I'm curious, you know, what people were disappointed with this. Um, was it the, the choice of books or the times or, or the or the actual trade dress? I would assume people are disappointed that it wasn't like an omnibus announcement. Well, yeah. Sorry, Curtis. <laughs> <laughs> oh my I'd be God. disappointed. Can you, if... can you imagine the room if the announcement was Batman year one and year two omnibus? People would have been on the streets, man, going nuts, Curtis. We've been waiting for that. And then we get DC's finest, and Curtis is like, "Yay!" Us. It'll it'll come. And now, especially if this one sells really well, you can you can bet that they'll do it in in hardcover after this. Uh, I would hope so, but I mean, we've seen these kind of collections before, and they still haven't released in hardcover format. Yeah. Um, not a fan of the choice of books. Interesting. I really think Batman's a strong, strong choice. We've seen the stuff released before, but a lot of those, like people were saying in this in the chat, are gone and out of print. Uh, no, no, they're not eight issues. They're about twenty to thirty like... something issues. They're epic size. Yeah. Good choice on Flash with post crisis Omni already on the way. True. Just don't get just don't get Wally and Barry mixed up, and you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> i'm happy with this for so many reasons serious question oh this is a good question from josh what's everything from the 90s to now the dark ages i don't know what you had some good books in the 90s though omar oh i know then they, i know I'm, i was just uh joking i don't know what you would call this era if you're going from golden age to bronze age to modern i don't know what what is what is this era no copper no copper was what 80s probably yeah mm -hmm. copper um, was like 80s somebody left a comment on the video i did breaking down those ages mm -hmm. and i thought they had a really nice uh what, so what did you call these ages 90s to now bj i didn't i just said hey they still consider it all modern which is odd because it's like a yeah but 10 years time story. when your little girls reading comics come like dad that ain't modern dad you old Right. Talk about <laughs> right. Well, I bring up I whenever someone says that I bring up the the argument that, you know, if you think about modern art, that refers to the, you know, the 1800s. And if you talk about modern design like in furniture and stuff, that's the 1950s. So mm -hmm. the term modern can stick around to 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 uh show off a certain era and it can stick forever. Okay. I want to get to some of these comments uh, about what they're not happy with what people aren't happy with my wallet is going to be disappointed in me i'm disappointed i'm not disappointed phil owens i'm just weary of getting burned again on another format mm -hmm. they might not produce more than a handful of volumes well i mean it seems like they're putting a lot of eggs in this basket here like they're very the the, the team is very excited it'll, uh, it'll be more than the dc essentials editions that they tried to push out back a couple of years ago right like they had um the Green Arrow by uh, Lemire and Sorrentino with it. Oh, the first arc of Batman those. and Robin by Tomasi and Gleason. And we only had like a couple, a handful of those. And they cut the line completely after that. Yeah. No, the look is fine. And I like the concept. Just feel they should have stuck with post-crisis. And they already have golden, silver, bronze series that they could have continued them. I think you it would be weird that to just been have collected. It. What, like, go ahead, Dom. Oh, the only thing I was just going to say was I think it'd be weird to have the omnibus of um, Flash Silver Age with not Flash Silver Age, the 80s run post crisis mm -hmm. and of DC's finest Flash 87s and on 
at the same time, it feels like it's just competing against itself. And I don't know if DC would like that um, for yeah. sales. I don't know if DC has experimented enough with let's release this format and then a month later release this omnibus format. Whereas Marvel has seen, oh, people are still buying these things like, no matter what format we release them in. Mm. Maybe there's a lot of truth behind that. And a lot of these books have been out of print. Although they just reprinted Wonder Woman by Gail Simone Omnibus. Um, I'm actually partly surprised that they didn't go for something like Jimenez or Rucka, which is around the same time frame. And I would argue it's just about as equal as a good starting on point like Simone. I think maybe that's probably the one where I'm scratching my head out the most out of all of these. But... Or maybe an era that hasn't been that well collected in the past. Because mm -hmm. there, there are some of those eras of Wonder Woman that are not in omnibus format. Or maybe even the John Byrne era, which has only been released in like a standard size hardcover mm -hmm. collections. I think they look good for what they are, but life's too short to still be buying trade paperbacks now <laughs> could be a me problem as a 55-year-old. Uh, maybe yeah. Larry. I mean, maybe you know, Curtis is still a young buck. Uh, maybe in ten years' time, he's gonna be like, yeah, Omar. I jumped the omnibus in ten. Book. In ten years, I'll have three hundred and fifty DC finest books in my library. Look at you, Curtis. <laughs> High hopes, my brother. <laughs> um, disappointed with the Golden Age stuff. More silver, bronze, or modern. This isn't for us. It's for casuals, which we were at one day. You would think <laughs> that. But epics, epics are a huge beast. Like they, it's no casuals anymore. There are epic collectors and epic collectors that get to the, oh, this is the first printing. I want the second printing because it has a better build. Like epic collectors that are picky hey, and choosing. Speaking and, or, of oh, which. I, I want the new printing because it has the new, yes, the new font. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know what I'm talking this about, Curtis. This also um, has, just in case you didn't know, they're using the new remaster work files on the inside of this. New yeah, I noticed when I opened my copy. That's freaking awesome. I'm so glad about that. For me, a lot of this is much older than what I would have wanted. It's mostly all been available before in formats, and I didn't buy it then either. People seem disappointed there isn't much material that hasn't been released before. I, I, I think that might be the big thing against this. Like, we've had on these. So too. We've had trade paperbacks. We've had collections of this in two different trades, kind of like the Kyle Rayner compendium. The Kyle Rayner compendium was disappointing to a lot of people because it was just two trade paperbacks put together mm. and no sign of a volume two because it didn't have a volume one on it. Yeah. So Jacob's loving the choices though. I'm hoping the Batman Beyond compendium sells well enough for omnibus version. While to me, or they a don't DC know. finest version. <laughs> okay, Curtis. okay Curtis okay <laughs> Curtis Curtis would you start a DC's finest podcast <laughs> yes he would <laughs> oh if man they I actually need to get commit, back into my commit to this you know what um I would I consider it I just um I have a hard time getting out my own podcast the Marvel one at, at this point I'm just too busy. But, yeah, but uh, like DC Finest is the new girl in town. You've already been out with Marvel Epics. You've taken them out to every restaurant. You've talked about everything with them. DC Finest is the new girl. She don't know how to cook well. She's still got a lot of things to learn. You're the guy to teach her. <laughs> Maybe I should start a DC Finest podcast. I've already Go be Curtis to it. <laughs> Do you I'm think like, someone already me. someone already made a DC finest ep, um uh, Facebook, Facebook group? group? Oh, <laughs> oh do it, man. Curtis. What's up? <laughs> um, you could add world's finest to it. No. Do you think DC versus Marvel Omni will go out of print? Oh, that's impossible. absolutely. No. Will it go out of print? Don't no, don't drive FOMO into these people. People <laughs> kicks. If you re if you really really want it, dude, go and pre order it. Really want it? Pre order the cover you want. Apparently, Jim Lee's going to have his own. Jim Lee's doing two DM, DM covers. Which is it, not disappointing. Yeah, you'll um, you'll definitely want to get it. Happy to get Golden Age soups for cheaper. That's a, one way of really looking at that. I'm not disappointed with anything. A year or two ago, people were fearing the demise of DC. Oh, gosh, I know, right? wonder what those channels are talking about these days. Uh, but I'm not uh, disappointed. Uh, I wish they would announce books that can give us more info on them. Just don't want Savage Sword of Conan from Dark Wars again horrid paper oh that paper stuff from that book some people can't afford all these omnis epics type books are great replacements for them true true 
They were omnis. I'd buy them. The decade plus long dedication is what's needed. Marvel did it with epics. We will see with these. Yeah, this is the very beginning, right? That's that's it, something to get excited for. Uh, Wally Allen and Barry West. That's right, Curtis. Okay. Art something or other. Some of the choices are good, but do we need yet another collection of the first couple of years of Superman? Catwoman right. is a surprise to me, too. And I'm glad that they stuck the miniseries in there. Uh, you think they would have started with JLA characters. I'm okay with the Catwoman book. That's the book that they were like, okay, well, maybe they had a dartboard of characters. Okay, we got Dead no, Man. I... Got the... <laughs> but I think Catwoman is Cat... a good choice. And not going with the Ed Brubaker run, like Dom mm -hmm. said, I think it's a it's an even better choice. Yep. Man, we're going to get Captain Adam. DC's finest collections up in here, Omar. If we didn't have Catwoman, <laughs> yeah, we could have gotten Captain Adam. We could have gotten Curtis's races Captain Marvel book. That he <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather, honestly, I'd rather. I think it would be cool if we got a Power of Shazam DC's finest line at some point. I think that would be pretty awesome. How can there Green be a Lantern, Catwoman Green Arrow, book a but no Green Lantern? I'm gonna turn no, this picture think... out. When they announced the first... everything at once, <laughs> I was gonna say when they announced the first four epics, I was hearing the same things. How mm -hmm. can they do a Thor book but not an X Men? Epic X Men, collection? yeah, no, exactly. Look where we are now. So mm -hmm. here's hoping. Oh, All right, yeah. So the, the... Go ahead. 87 plus is officially modern age. Woo! -hoo! We're still modern. Some of us. <laughs> Batman um, will sell. Wonder Woman will sell well. Catwoman may sell well. The tougher <laughs> ones, I feel, would be Flash and Superman, just because these stories are so old, classic but old. Kane, that is so true. Mm -hmm. How will these sell for younger modern comic readers used to current stories from DC? Well, and that's the beauty of this line by not putting volume numbers on it. They don't have to buy this one. Mm -hmm. um, the younger, and and then you know six months from now when they announce the next more modern era um, Superman, then they can just get that one. I, I love I, all these different ages. Chromium age, neon age, mm -hmm. lead age. When's the windbreaker era? Windbreaker <laughs> age? <laughs> 90s. Somebody, somebody in my comments suggested that we call the, the image era, basically like that the 90s modern stuff, we call that the chrome age. And then... Huh. Around all the, the covers, the other covers were chrome, the, all the right. chrome. and then uh, early 2000 stuff can mm -hmm. be modern to now. Yeah, Brett's saying chrome age. I kind of like that. Nirvana is considered classic rock now. Thank you for making me feel old. The selection is so random. I think they're worse. I, I yeah. honestly, I, I don't know. I, think I don't think it is. No, I, I like, I, I it's like it's all over the place. I still would have replaced. I would have replaced Superman and mm -hmm. Flash with something else, but that's just me mm -hmm. because I feel like to me, if I'm trying to sell this and market that those, that big mm -hmm. year gap is just so overwhelming. I think. Um, but I um, think that DC with these initial announcements wanted to show you that they are going to cover every era of DC in this, in this collection here. So if you replaced Superman and Flash with something uh, newer, then we'd be mm -hmm. like, well, what how far back are they going i think this it answers i think it answers some questions i think to get people excited though i would give them the books that they want and i and i know when i say that everybody wants something different right but i would go with the majority voice and the way you do that is by looking at yourselves you look at what's sold mm -hmm. the most mm -hmm. batman's going to sell no matter what but i think they really did some research on batman they were like holy crap people really like this mm -hmm. post crisis stuff Mm -hmm. And I think that will be your big, big headliner here. Um, I'm I'm wondering though, Omar, for Flash, because I I know a lot of people in my generation, uh, for my generation, I'm speaking to all the. Are you Gen part Z of the people. Copper Age? What are I don't know, Dom. What are you? <laughs> I mean, I'm still in college. But anyways, oh. a child. <laughs> or, or, or he could be really smart and just wanting, or a really bad <laughs> college thing and failing. All right, what, what's up, Dom? What's your generation? But no, I I think with a lot of people like newcomers who grew up with gosh the cw flash show right i think a lot of people post 2008 2009 um have a uh -huh. been accustomed to barry allen as the flash and okay if you maybe give a new reader hey barry allen this is this is his first stories going around central city 
wiping out crime and Gorilla Grodd and Captain Cold and all those guys. Introduce that to them first, because maybe you know that's their Flash. Um, and yeah, I maybe that's that was part of their their thoughts on it. And again, I. I, I don't know like where else would you where else would you start because we just had a Wade Omni not too long ago I think that's you know still super in print um you can get the John's Omnis you know it's I I think if you wanted to start somewhere get yeah you got you got Flash <laughs> you you do have one of the most important comic books in comic book history collected in there as well as Superman right like there's no denying that so a lot of his historical Ooh, aspects. the most important ones in Flash. For Silver Age, right, and the first crossing over with uh, with the Golden Age, uh, Golden yeah. Age, yeah. Green Lantern Mosaic, John Stewart. Hey, well, um, probably not. If <laughs> <laughs> I got that one behind me too, <laughs> <laughs> just because we were talking about the books that were left out of the DC versus uh, Marvel omnibus, yeah. you know, yeah. maybe not. It's epic so collectors are so weird, right? No, no, just Canadian epic collectors, Michael. <laughs> These aren't similar We're to epic best. collections, are they? Not reprinting sequential runs in various series. I think they are. I think this They're... is their, like, from everything we're reading, from everything we're looking at, from the mock up images, mm -hmm. instead of the volume number, we're just having years printed on the spine and on the back. It's got epic written all over it, like, all over these these titles yep. are there ending years for these like ending dates yeah there are but what, what was it 2020 2023 why would you... okay that's ridiculous i think they just put that there just, oh know. yeah wait that's a placeholder is, everything else is written in latin. it's all mock-ups yeah, yeah. <laughs> everything is written in latin too my bad i was like 2023 got the that... lorem ipsum filler text in <laughs> yeah <laughs> And if you zoom in, the cover price is twenty bucks or something like that. So it's like, yeah, not, none of that back cover content is set in stone. You mean the Latin can't be trusted at the very bottom? Bottom there. That's, uh, that's nutty. Yeah. That's oh, those are those are X's. Yeah, these are X's, huh? I dig well, it. The ones that I. You were looking at some that had yeah. nineteen ninety nine. Yeah. Um. Let me see. Any more thoughts on these? Chat once asking. Oh, there's my buddy Aaron. How are you, my friend? I would have wanted more modern stuff like modern Batman and Superman, but I'm super excited to see DC go to distance. That's right. I want a Jeff Johns Green Lantern run of the finest. That DC's finest already in people's vocabulary. Love it. I know Curtis is excited. Curtis, you're going to get. All right, everybody in the chat. I'm not going to do a poll. I'm just going to ask. Are you going to get them all? Are you going to get just one? Which one are you going to get? Curtis, I'm going to start with you. Which one are you going to get? Or are you going to get all five? I am all in for these first five for sure. And yes, then um, I'll make I'll make a more definitive decision when I see the longer term plans, like when they roll out the next set of announcements. DC's finest Looney Tunes Volume 1. I'd hey, buy all I like one. that. That'd be great. You know, get off my lawn, Dom. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Phil has lived long enough to actually said that. Wait, he's off of Kentucky. He lives in Europe. Never mind. I think I've actually said that. Get off my lawn. Uh, what about you, Dom? Yes, no, maybe one. I two. will a hundred percent be getting Batman. Oh, yeah. Thinking about um, uh, thinking about like. I have to get it for a friend, man. I mean, I think these are great ways to introduce these to the, you know, regular consensus, regular, regular folks who might not be into it. So I'm 100% in for it. I just know I will be pushing these for my university library. They don't have enough collections. I think these are great for libraries. What about you, my friend? BJ Kicks. Yes, All sir. five or eh, one I'm or two? Absolutely going Batman. Mm -hmm. I'm probably grabbing Wonder Woman. The only way I go all five is if I start some kind of content line around the DC finest. There's there's no reason to buy every book for me. Yeah, I get it. I, I'm thinking like the same. I'm like, do my viewers really want me to buy all five of these so I can do an overview and then give them away? Except for Batman year one and year two, because that's staying. That ain't going nowhere. Mm -hmm. Right. That's that's the book to be excited about. Man, all right. If, I'm gonna... I've, if wait, if Lifeline's 
for for Catwoman, if that miniseries is going to be in there, I might get that as well because I I had Balint Volume One. I don't know where it is now, but if it, yeah, you know, if that was and that wasn't in the Balint um, yeah. mm-hmm. Jim Balint Volume One. So at least one all in. Nope, Batman only. No way. Yes, all of them. Catwoman only. Warren never ceases to surprise me. What? I'm gonna get a Superman one. Superman. They use Chat GPT to mock up these covers. I don't. I think they look fine. I don't think it's Chat GPT. I mean, I like no, the covers. they they got they got structure. They got uniformity. They have similarities between all of them. I yeah. don't see uh, any a plus. big problem. Yeah. I mean, uh, Catwoman, probably not all unless I get a race. I look into Batman and Wonder, Wonder Woman. I'm getting none of these finest. Peace and love, Arya. <laughs> Come Not on, a, only Omnis and Absolutes. <laughs> if I purchase any of these, maybe Wonder Woman and Catwoman. Mainly looking at Batman and Catwoman. Catwoman, depending on price, that's the other thing. We don't know the price yet. And I'm pretty sure June... What do you think, Kurt? It's June, July for solicits for these if they're coming out in November, some of them? Uh, yep, I think so. Okay. Yeah, they, I mean, they'll be in the... You know, so in June or July, we should get the books... It would be the September solicits that would have a November book in it, right? For a trade paperback? Mm, yeah. Depending on how far it, it, some trades are. I was thinking July. Uh, I still trades think July. I think, right I think I think July will get one. We'll see. Probably. And when do we get? When do you announce the July? When do they release the July solicits? We are like going to get April because oh, man, July. It would be third week, third week. It's always the third Friday of every Mm -hmm. single month that DC pushes out brand new solicitations. That's when my site rolls and we get them in and we let them all to release to the public. So I, uh, what, what was the latest I'm looking at? Let me look at DC's May. um, I think May was the last one for Marvel and DC. Let's see. DC, the one's white. The latest book that they have here um, is Mr. Miracle by the absolute by Tom King and Mr. Raj, which is coming out on the the 12th of November. So it could be next month. Oh, no, but that's no, for but, no, the trade paperbacks, oh, right? So. The trade paperbacks, mm-hmm. trade paperbacks trade usually paperbacks. about, I think at the earliest, I think they do four August. months unless there's delays. Yeah, um, probably in for the first five. Nothing past 1998. No Wonder Woman. I'll be getting Batman and maybe Wonder Woman. Not for me. I'll pass on them. When they do modern runs, I'll be all over it depending on what they choose. Right now, I'm all in. I hold out for Triangle Era Superman. Maybe I'll get Batman, but I already have year one in hardcover. But you need that year two, Adam. Batman, maybe Catwoman. Catwoman, no interest in any of these except Wonder Woman. Bring on Batwoman, Batgirl, and Supergirl. Ooh. Hey, getting Supergirl in, fi- in DC's finest would be awesome. I so. would be good with that. Yes, most likely Catwoman. But the problem is expanding the line, right? You have ten mm-hmm. DC books, and you're only coming out with two a year. Then we're back in that epic date. Mm-hmm. And, ooh, people get impatient. Yeah, I, oh man. Most likely Catwoman, Catwoman, Flash, Wonder Woman, Dell Comics, Looney Tunes would be called oh, Dell Comics. All show support. Oh, look at that! DC's fine ass. I'll- <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. For that. Uh, I will get them all. I need to launder some of my money. Jim Bowling, Catwoman for me. If I found them heavily discounted, like about 15 bucks, I'd buy them. Batman and Flash probably got the Superman stuff in Omni. I'll sample something. Probably Catwoman, since I own none of those issues outside of the crossovers. If they stay around $50, I'll try to get them all. That's the price point's going to be interesting. Curtis thinks 35 I don't know, Curtis. No, like, I don't think that's what's... You got me. No, thirty-five. That. Thirty-five is what was stated yeah, at right the here. panel. Large size paperback collections starting at thirty-four dollars and ninety-nine cents. Uh, yeah, starting. Here you go. Starting. Could be. Yeah, early. I mean, yeah, depending on page count for sure. Absolutely. My last thought: I've decided to support the line to give it the best chance of success. Look at Phil Owen, spoken like a hero. Definitely buying Superman, Batman, and Flash. I only buy oversized comics. I'm old with bad eyes. Omnis and the Luxe of Gallery. So my absolutes. Don't forget absolutes, will you? Forget absolutes. I'll probably get the Batman and Catwoman. Pick and choose the years that I like. Same as the epics. I like that. I want Captain Carrot. Oh, Captain Carrot would be a good one. That would be good. 
I hope we will see the direction of this line early on. Ideally, DC will communicate their plan. I hope so, too. Mm -hmm. Superman for sure. Flash possibly no on the other three. Batman is the only oh. one because I love have that material. Who said so here's oh. something we didn't here's something we didn't talk about. Uh, they said that they're um, they're going to have stuff based on different genres. So not all of them will be uh, character DC finest. Some of them will be uh, genre based, like horror or war and that kind of stuff. Um, oh, dude, give me some. Mm -hmm. Give me. Some, yes. Yeah. I buy Kubert War comics. I'm yeah, for sure. Western comics. I mean, some of that haunted tank. I haven't seen all that. about family. Always unknown soldier and. Tom bragging he has friends. <laughs> also, yes, I'll try one or two books. Needs more Legion of superheroes. Yes, Legion doesn't get enough respect. I own the Wonder yeah. Woman Omni and the deluxe of Batman and Wonder Woman. I'm very picky on an anything pre-90s, so some of these are hard pass. None of these are jumping out to me except for Wonder Woman, but I'd rather get the Omnibus. It's a really cool line, though. I have the DC archives of Flash and Superman might buy the Batman since I have the floppies and that's it for me. I just bought the Wonder Woman omnibus waiting for a long time for a reprint. So this collection doesn't make a ton of sense. Would have preferred to see 2000s Rucka. I'll get the Ballon Cat Woman read it for the article. Liar. <laughs> Maybe this is where we get the Warlord. Oh, yes. If I didn't have the Simone omnibus, I'd go Wonder Woman. Probably Catwoman. I want an over When did the Simone Woman. omnibus come out? That was November. Yeah, it was yeah, just it, is. it was just yeah, November 18th of last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's pretty quick that they're gonna release it again. Might pick up Catwoman, and that's a crazy out of print Jim Ballant run. Got here late. Sorry if you guys already covered that. Oh yeah, we've been talking about all these. I will be picking up all and hoping Hawkman gets some DC's finest line treatment too. Batman Year One is getting the artist edition. Yes. We need an Omar view of these. Okay. <laughs> More you wanted me to talk about Golden Age comics again. Uh, probably going to get the Superman one as I have no Silver Age Superman in my collection. All others in Omni and Absolutes. Supes and Batman never read Bats Year Two, so probably. Oh, oh, you're in for a treat, Captain Mikazu. That's one way to put it. That's <laughs> shut up. That's a great book. <laughs> Maybe this is how we can get All Star Comics and All Star Squadron. Yes, Omar, buy Superman. them all. You know you want to. I don't know if I want to. If I didn't have a channel, I'd be like, no, I'm not buying them all. Okay, okay. If I if I didn't have a channel, oh, I'm stupid. I'd get Catwoman and Batman. Yeah, I'd get Batman again. And I and I'd start that stupid line all over again. I'm like, oh, I can replace my Cape Crusader and Dark Knight Detective. These look cooler. Omar, how far into the last airbender? Oh, uh, I'm on the episode four. I think we're reviewing it on Sunday evening. I hope these do well, and it gives me hope for my most wanted DC run, which is Hal Jordan Spectre. Very underrated, and it would be a number. It would be a one and done book. Oh, what? No, no. You put the crossovers in there, man. That's a that's two books at least. You're gonna Spike Fox and Crow and Hanna Barbera. Dell would be great. Those are great. Yeah, thirty five dollars American is the price point. Maybe when they print other material, I don't have yet. Omnipo, how are you, buddy? I don't want these, but I agree. I could, could be a good gift <laughs> for somebody. $39.99 or forget about it. I love these. Like, nope, I draw the line at $39.99. Batwoman and, or Batman and Catwoman, maybe Catwoman. I might pick some of these up in a few years when they're Ollie's already shot. <laughs> <at these designers. laughs> It'll be there next month. I love Maddie's comment here. Don't play yourself. Like the channel's the only thing making you double buy things. Uh uh. <laughs> What are, you, what are you doing watching and then poking fun at me? How dare you? It's a shame you can't come out tomorrow night. Batman Year 2, the Neko wafer. Of, oh, my God. See, that's how you get banned from this channel. Batman Year 2, a trick or treat. Which would you guys wish to see collected? Uh, I think we did talk a little bit about that earlier. What kind of uh, comics and – I would not – I would – I'm not gonna buy all these, Maddie. I would get Silver Age and Golden Age if it wasn't for the channel. Uh, in Omar, I trust. Let's go bats here, too. That's right. Don't come back here and tell me you didn't like it, though. Only tell me if you liked it. Omar and Chad, how's Dark Knight 3 Master Race? I saw it in an oversized hardcover for six dollars and 99 cents for that price. Uh, it's got good artwork by Andy Kubert. That's all I will say. Uh, 
Anybody else read it? The Master Race? That's Jay? exactly what I would say, too, Omar. Um, what do That's 100% think? what I would say. That's the only thing I'm saying about that book. <laughs> It's a nice price point for an oversized hardcover, though. Yeah, they did a Master Race the covers OHC. That's probably a better value than the story. They're doing that probably at Ollie's as well. (laughs) I think it's getting an (laughs) absolute reprint, too. Yes, it is. Coming soon, the cow pile and Omar's must shut up. (laughs) Just got to let a girl know and I'll join. Oh, I meant tomorrow night. We're going to go karaoke. Maddie, you're going to come out with us. Come on now. I want to go. You want to go with us, Curtis? What's your karaoke yeah. song? Oh, wait, I should know um, this. It's Kermit the Frog, right? Like, uh, Oh, yeah, Rainbow Connection. Rainbow Connection. I would do that one for sure. <laughs> Make everybody cry. What? Uh, what's your song? What's your karaoke song? Uh, I like Creep by Radiohead. Whoa, did not expect yeah. that. Really? Okay. Yeah. What about you, Dom? You got a karaoke song? Do you, do you like singing? I'm Filipino, so of course I love singing. Stereotypes are back, baby. What's your song? Um, as long as you love me by Backstreet Boys. Okay. Okay. Uh, BJ Kicks. Yeah, I don't sing. You don't sing. But you've got no, such I... a nice voice. Yeah, you got such a it's nice silky voice. Why like, a up? singing voice? I can announce the next karaoke year. <laughs> You're the next like that dude from Voice to Men that talks the whole time while everybody else is singing. You know, he's not even in Voice to Men anymore. Of course he's not. They kicked what? that man out. Really? Yeah. Mike Bass is not in the group. They don't do spoken interludes anymore. They just go straight to Wan Ye screaming at everybody. Only Creed at karaoke. No, that's like almost as bad as Nickelback. No offense, uh, Curtis. <laughs> I assume you like Nickelback. Here's a good question. Now Why? Because I'm Canadian? I have to like <laughs> Nickelback. <laughs> yes. Uh, now that DC has announced their own epic line, how do you think Marvel will respond? The same way they've always responded to, to DC things. Business as usual. Nothing's going to really change. Uh, and I think that's what you do as, as a business, right? You're going to put out a new format. The Platinum Collection. Well, it would have to be something that Marvel owns the rights to, right? Like, uh, uh, they did they did do a platinum collection. Remember, that's what those big oversized books were. Um, oh, okay. Need a new name then. They need a they need an absolute killer, like something something in absolute ki- format with a slipcase and things like that. Um, that may I mean they may I don't know they might they might do something. Actually, kiss from her. Oh my God, I forgot you like that song. <laughs> you and my wife. <laughs> That one is a good karaoke song. Absolutely. DJ Kicks needs to do some Barry White. What about my Barry uncle, White? My uncle does uh, Tennessee whiskey. Like, that's oh. his, his go to. Marvel Absolutes. I was just thinking that. Yeah. They, they have a Mar- Platinum Marvels is the way to go. It's a big book. O- Opinions about Scrooge by Jason Aaron. Um, I had emailed Jason Aaron because he's coming on my show in april and we were talking and he said oh by the way when i show up i think you're going to be excited about my next book it's for marvel and in my head i thought oh man this dude done confirmed he's gonna be writing an x-men title cool yeah i did not expect him to be writing uncle scrooge i was like that's what? pretty sweet what do you think uh curtis you're a big duck fan um i think it's great i think it's uh it's always nice to see new material coming out from uh, talented writers, and uh, I think that it'll be really a really good story. Nice to see Alex Ross doing a cover as well. That's pretty awesome. That's nuts, man. Dom, BJ, thoughts on, on Jason I, Aaron? I like that any... they're pulling the Disney What If uh, cover artist for the one shot. Uh, I don't know how to say the guy's name, but I thought that was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. I, I might be buying it. I mean, I I don't mind duck content. A couple of people in my comic shop got me into it, so I'll probably check it out. And it's a name I trust too. So, okay. Uh, what about you, BJ? Are you a fan of Duck Comics? Or, or um, I think you're a fan of Aaron, right? I'm a fan of Darkwing. Um, I've hey, never don't let read. Tom Rosa hear you say that, but go ahead. I've <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've never read. Well, I've not read a ton of Scrooge. I've read like most of the Life and Times, which I did love. Um. But 
I've not read a ton of Jason Aaron to know uh-huh. if I'm like going to love his take. Uh, but I'm curious about it. And I'm a sucker for like just a, any all ages comic, like a comic that I can legitimately mm-hmm. read with my kids. Like it is just a one shot. So there's not much uh, commitment to mm-hmm. it as well. I'm excited. I'm excited. Any new comics, any new duck comics I'm excited for. What are the issues that have been removed from the amalgam omnibus? Well, nothing has actually been removed. Nothing was officially added. And I'm going to highlight BJ to let you know which issues to go and buy. It's JLX and the Magneto and the Magnetic Men. Those two issues are not in the omnibus, the amalgam omnibus. So in case you need them, those are it. Thank you for that. How angry is Don Rosa? I don't want to know. He's going to be really mad. He's angrier I mean, than Flint Hart Glomgold. <laughs> All those years he thought he was a uh, Scrooge. Turned out to be a Flint Hart. <laughs> but um, honestly, Don, Don can't draw anymore. You know, his eyesight's been the problem for a long time. And he he knew when to leave. And I, I know he loves talking about him, though. Coming soon, what if Scrooge McDuck versus the X-Men? Give love a bad name. Yes. Oh, dude, I, I love the I, – I sing Bon Jovi and the boss when we go karaoke. Don Rosa is like 500. Can he hear – leave Don Rosa alone. He's a national treasure. Read more Jason Aaron, BJ Kicks. You won't regret it. Maddie. What do you, what do you recommend, Maddie? What Jason Aaron should I read? Because I came in – when I came in the comics, Jason Aaron was writing Avengers. Mm-hmm. I wasn't Oh, yeah. Not the one I would go with. Have you read his Thor? Have you read uh, Jason Aaron's Thor? I think that's regarded as a fan favorite. That's true. People, I did. People might hate me for saying this, but I liked his Punisher that he did recently. You don't that was a good run. More take. That was a good. That was a good run. I will agree with Curtis. I um. There's a lot that he's written. Um, people are saying Scalped. Scalped is fun. No, it's not. I'm sorry. I can't do it. I've never been a fan of Scalped. <laughs> But people love it, man. Love it. Absolutely love it. Thor uh, seems to be the most common answer in the chat right now. I think 100. Thor is Thor is a safe bet. That's what people really enjoy by him. Yeah, Thor is good. And um uh, all yeah, the whole thing, Jane Foster and everything. It's, it's a really, really so good it's the best cool Jane, it's the best Aaron experience you'll get at Marvel, I think. Thor's Aaron's Magnum Opus. We haven't read his turtles yet. Turtles or Uncle Scrooge. I what can't wait like, for Aaron never, Turtles. I never want to. I never want to write anything again. All I want to write is Uncle Scrooge comics because I did it. Wolverine and the X Men was one of my favorites. I absolutely. I wasn't the biggest fans of his Wolverine runs. I know he, he's got a huge fan following for that, but I love, love Wolverine and the X Men. So good. Yes, Wanted Dead or Alive, brother. You know I love me some Young Guns too, man. I voted for that Jason Aaron Volume One on this, and I hope it gets reprinted. His uh, J- Action Comics is good. Jason Aaron's Punisher was underrated. I'm so glad I'm not alone in that. A lot of people like I, I dug Ooh, it. Yeah. I didn't I have a problem with it. People were so mad about the retcon at the end. I was like, have you read Garth Ennis is born? Like the devil was yep. talking to Frank mm-hmm. Castle. <laughs> We've seen ridiculous retcons before. Uh Jason Aaron's Tiny Titans shook me. Very shut up, Michael. Why did I even click on you? It was Batman versus the Incredible Hulk. It should be in the DC versus, isn't it there? It's right oh, here. It's not in the listing there, but I yes, it is. It's, it's DC be. special series number 27. Ah. Uh, yeah. I was gonna say it's there. It's there. Just not it's not called print, it's not called Batman it, Hulk. Aaron's Star Wars was great too. I liked the Star Wars. I thought it was good too. I really dug Aaron's Star Wars. And I'm excited for the uh Marvel U- Omar Marvel used Micronauts again on an upcoming Deadpool cover. X-Men versus Micronauts confirmed. Thank you for that Saturday morning. I hope. <laughs> God bless. I hope. Uh Aaron teamed up Wolverine and Dupe. Let's do it. was so good. I love what he did with those kids in that book. I loved it. I did not want that series to end. I would like DC to do a collection of John Stewart Green Lantern for DC's finest. Curtis, buddy, I haven't. It's been a while since I've seen you, man. I, I missed you. I'm glad you were uh, open to doing this. By the way, man, big thank you to BJ for like canceling plans with his wife to do this, and and a big thank you to my wife too for letting me come down here and do this because we were gonna do something as a family, and I'm like, 
Oh man, DC just emailed me back finally. I think I can answer some questions officially because I was waiting for this. I was waiting for the official like DC to be like, yeah, go ahead. Because I don't like talking about rumors or maybes, and you know, I like to give people the information that I get. And a big thank you to Dom for putting all this together. So thank you all. Thank you for the sacrifices you made on a Friday night. Dom, you're a young man. What the hell are you doing here? You ain't I love. Down? I love comics just as much as you do, and I work for a comic book information site. So, like, I got it. What is the site? You've mentioned it twice. You've never said name dropped. What is it? Comicreleases.com. So, oh, me yeah. and Mr. Webhead, or some some of you may know him as Mr. Mr. Webhead. <laughs> uh, we 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 do two things on the site. We we track all upcoming uh, collected editions, the big ones at least, and the weird you, ones James. from marvel uh dc all the image all the image boom indie companies like that and we put them all in there so you guys don't have to go scouring for different websites that might have conflicting confirmation we also get information for product info from marvel dc etc put them all in for solicitations in every single month it's um it's a lot of rough work but i enjoy it he mr webhead is still very questioning like why do you enjoy it? I'm like, I just like comics, man. <laughs> oh man. Uh, I got a question for you guys. Which of these collections are you buying? The Marvel versus DC? Both. Is- I'm buying both. <laughs> I'm an I, idiot. I, I, I have most of the amalgam uh issues because I found them scouring in dollar bins over at my comic shop and other comic shops. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I know that these collections are probably not going to get printed for a very long time afterwards, and there's a chance that they might get sold out. So I'm I'm gonna get I'm gonna play it safe and get both. Um might not be smart for my wallet, but it if, long if, run. On uh, <laughs> uh, all honesty, if I if on a budget, the first one, DC the first Marvel. One. That's the classic. Yeah, that's that's got the wonderful artwork. It's got mm-hmm. some solid stories. Not that this one doesn't. This one still has mm-hmm. some fun stuff, but it's also very nineties, and it knows it's very nineties. I mean, if you look at Dark Claw, there, you know, it knows what it is. Yeah. Uh, big thank you to the marriage counselors out there for helping YouTubers cancel plans with their spouses to do live shows, me included. Thank you, Maddie. It's a big thank you to them. <laughs> big thank you to them. Uh, just the Marvel and DC for me, comics are dope. Omar, I don't double dip five minutes later. Both. Oh, but I mean, if I'm on a budget, yeah, the first one. If I'm, if I'm on a super, super tight budget, I'll just watch somebody flipping through the book on a YouTube channel <laughs> and cry and live vicariously through them. Smart for my wallet. My wallet never graduated high school. It's on. Thank you for that, uh, Michael. I don't know if I should pre-order or wait for a better discount. 80 bucks. Well... I think they just now went officially into the solicits. It was very weird. They mm-hmm. weren't solicited at all. These haven't been officially solicited. Yeah, you haven't seen them on the DC catalog yet. Uh, because I'm got sorry, leaked, you did see them right? in the DC catalog. You haven't seen them in the DC solicitations. Uh, but people were just kind of gauging the price. But I think uh, now, it, just two days ago, I think they did go up officially solicitations on it went up on lunar on the 15th of february if my if our comic releases.com information is correct so mm-hmm. that is that's when i put it in the system that was me watching your question too omni <laughs> just weeping and watching i'm so sorry um these are due out uh august oh, 6th. they are due august 6th both are august 6th yeah so they'll be in the next solicits they gotta be in the next i was surprised no I, I shouldn't have been surprised because I knew that they were still waiting on like, let's see what we can release. Omar, who did you vote to win the Marvel versus DC? Oh, oh man. I was a freaking nerd. I was a like, I, I went like, well, actually I don't think there's a way that Wolverine could be Lobo. I voted for Lobo. I'm not even a Lobo fan, but I was like, logically there's no way Wolverine can beat Lobo. So I remember voting for Lobo. I did not vote for Jubilee. I voted for Soups. Oh, I'm trying to think what I'm trying to think of the Marvel characters I voted for. I think I voted because I went with Logic. I was like, okay, let's think about this. Is this really what oh, happened? Man. Yeah, I was. <laughs> dude, I nerded the fudge out of. That. <laughs> let's revote. We got Batman versus Captain America. Oh, Bat, Bat, Bat would have out, outsmarted him. 
We Go got ahead. Hulk versus Superman. 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 Superboy versus Spider Man. I think I chose Spider Man because he's been at it longer. I went with that logic. <laughs> we got Wolverine <laughs> versus Lobo. I went Lobo. I'm an idiot. And then Wonder Woman versus Storm. I'm taking Storm. I think I voted Storm too. Yeah. Why did I say Jubilee? Was there like a second poll or something that they did later on? I don't know. Uh, jo- Jubilee had like a, a sto- like a she was like in love with Superboy, right? Yeah, and she had like a story. No, I thought it was Robin. Terry. It was Robin. And yeah, Superboy. there were secondary. There were secondary fights like Quicksilver and and Flash. Flash. Yeah, I I, um, I remember those. But I remember, uh, I do remember like think overthinking Storm and Wonder Woman. I'm like, well, if she gets her like lasso of truth around her, man, dude. Yeah. Then it became like this fantasy. Man, if she gets her lasso of truth. That's kind of hot. Storm be like, oh man. Anyway, you don't need to know what 17 year old Omar was thinking back then. Um, did you vote, Curtis? Were you in the big like comics like this at the time? Oh yeah, I I don't think I actually voted, but I was following the whole thing as it went along for sure dom were you born no <laughs> i got <laughs> i got all of that? i got all of these issues through back issues and dollar bins at my comic store listen i was only five but i couldn't okay resist. what are you two doing you trying to make me feel old oh, <laughs> it's bad, it's i think work. uh that's what webhead says when uh we were in like company chats or group calls or whatever and i just say like some stupid young person would say and he's like you made me feel like I'm freaking 50 or 60 by saying that. It beats the alternative, it. man. It beats the alternative. All right. Let's wrap it up. I'm going to go see a movie with my daughter in the comfort of our own couch. What, um, <laughs> any last thoughts, Curtis? Blessings for DC's finest? Wish them luck? What do you, what do you think? Uh, I think that um, even if you are not fans of the material if you can afford it then support the line because i would like it to because i like we said dc is very wishy-washy when it comes to this kind of stuff based on their sales so Mm -hmm. i I, i'm all in for all of these volumes so that it can be successful (laughs) 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 i'm gonna get roasted later oh well (laughs) Yes, you voted. That's right. Oh, important question. She wants to watch a horror movie. We haven't decided yet, so I got to check what's out. What do you recommend, Kane? Before I leave, um, Dom. Last thoughts on either DC versus Marvel or the DC's finest? Yeah, I redid the calculations on the solicitations, and Curtis would be right. I think the earliest these would appear would be April um, mm-hmm. for solicitations, which is yeah, two months away. Uh, yeah, I'm in. I'm in the same line though. I would. I'm. I think I might get one or two of these to let DC know. Hey, uh, it's time that you guys actually, you know, commit to something. Uh, vote with our wallets. And I would like to see people who might have never opened up a comic book before pick this up and say, "I love these characters. And I want to. And I want to buy more." And I, I, that's at the end of the day. I think what companies should be doing, trying to get as many new people into this hobby as possible. Uh, and I. I I like uh, that they're putting that initiative to step their foot down, step their feet down, and and actually do it. Oh, I like that. Okay, BJ, what about you, dude? Final thoughts on DC Finest, uh, or whatever, or or life, or yeah. that yeah. sounds morbid. Don't do that. Don't yeah. do that. Don't do that. <laughs> final thoughts on my life. What? Where are my final thoughts? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> one thing i will note right i think we look at the dc versus marvel and then the amalgamate as if they're two different eras there's really only four issues from a different era the rest of this stuff was pretty much coming out concurrently so uh although the amalgam stuff is like decidedly 90s like it just feels like the 90s uh, mm. I wouldn't write it off just straight up because the actual DC versus Marvel crossover like has some really, really nice moments. Um, the amalgam stuff is super hit and miss, but like, for example, this uh Joker and Ben Riley meetup from DC versus Marvel was like, yeah, so Dan Jurgens did that one. 
Uh, I know Bagley uh, did the the other one too. That's Bagley did one. the the Spider Man and Batman one. Yeah, that was a good one. I like the art in that one. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of really cool moments in the DC versus Marvel crossovers, but like I said, the amalgamage is so hit and miss. For me, if I've only got money for one, I'm going with the the classic crossovers. Um, it's true because you can find all of that uh, DC versus Marvel stuff in dollar bins. So you could put together the contents of this Omni for like, I don't know, 40 bucks. Yeah. Um, but you can't do that with the uh, with the crossover omnibus because those ones are just more rare in general. Yeah. I, have like, a I paid like 500 for my set and I'm still missing an issue. Like I'm missing the uh, Superman Fantastic Four Treasury joint. Yeah. Everybody's up in arms about the missing amalgam issues. Ain't nobody complaining. Where is the Wizard of Oz? The true first Marvel vs. <laughs> DC comic book. I'd love that. That'd Where's that? Come on. Curtis is a comic historian. And Wizard of Oz is owned by Warner Brothers right now. So, like, DC it could, could definitely Maybe might as well. Got... It could have been. <laughs> uh, actually, I, Josh, I think I may do that. I, Evil Dead Rising is that streaming on anything? The Blackening is that streaming on anything? My brother told me that was good. What's up to the panel and everyone in the chat? What's going on, Lionheart? How are you, my dude? I actually love that movie. Oh, what did Kane choose? Um, because I'm curious. I actually love that movie, horror movie, not my genre. Go with a classic, whatever, which, that. whatever that is. <laughs> Uh, do you want them both to be scared of <laughs> like, oh, dude, my daughter loves horror movies though, and it's something we bond over. So, I may do Evil Dead Rising. I like that, Josh. That's a good one. Okay, uh, my last thoughts is I can't believe we're getting that. I can't believe the amount of news that week that I got sick. It was insane. It started with Wolverine and Deadpool, like the, the, the trailer, and I got sick like a couple days later. Madam Webb destroyed my body and wrecked my soul. It was that awful. And it was just news after news of all these exciting things. And I couldn't talk about it because I was like so miserable. But now I'm finally we can officially talk about the things that are coming. And I'm excited. So, yeah, this is good. I I thought it'd be years before this. So it's good news. And I'm, I'm excited for the DC's finest. I hope they do well. And I hope to see them expand to where – you know, the Marvel stuff is like every couple, every like two. Oh my gosh, Marvel releases like two or one a week. That's how many we have. That's how many we have. My goodness. So that's it. Um, so thank you everybody for joining us. I'm gonna let my panel exit and tell uh people where they can be found on the internet, not where they live, but on the internet. Uh, Curtis, why don't you start, buddy? Sure, yeah. I'd look for me at epicmarvelpodcast.com and I uh, follow my uh, Facebook group, which is you just have to search Epic Collections on Facebook and you'll find it. Um, and uh, maybe I'll start a DC Finest group. We'll see. Um, okay. To his right is Dom making his debut here on Near Me Condition, but he will be back on Monday with me. And what are we going to be talking about? Where can people find you, buddy? Man, uh, you can find me on Domovex on YouTube. Uh, it's the same name I have there on the handlebar uh, for social media, for Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, mm -hmm. etc. Domovex Studio, um, Dom of X Studio, and of course all of my work over at ComicReleases.com. It's the full site uh, as I have edited. It, so you can find me in all there as well. And this is the Curtis Epic Collection and the Discord. And look at my dude, James, already on it. And the comic releases. Okay. Uh, and then last but not least, my buddy BJ. Where can people find you, man? Yes, I am BJ Kicks of Comics Are Dope. YouTube.com slash at Comics Are Dope. Because that at sign for some reason. But hey, um, but on social media, I'm BJ Kicks everywhere. Uh, nice to meet you. There you go. All hey, right. Guys. Uh, there's the Discord and his YouTube channel. Big thank you to James, too. Uh, that's it, everybody. I will be back tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for the Comics Q&A, which we do every Saturday, because apparently I don't like my weekends. But I am going to go in karaoke at night, so I'm hoping to be 
really drunk and toasty. Uh, but I will be back on Sunday because I have one more Marvel Omnibus announcement at 6 a.m. And then at 2.30 p.m., Peter M. and I are going to go over the recent announcements. So make sure you're there if you want additions or anything to any of the Marvel Omnis, please. Uh, and then I will be back with Amanda, I think, at 8 p.m. to talk about Avatar The Last Airbender. Because apparently I really don't like my weekends. Uh, but that's it, everybody. Thank you for being here. Smash that like button on the way out. Get excited. Have a great evening, everyone. Enjoy your Friday night. That's leaving the studio, damn it. Whoops. Ending the stream. There we go. <laughs>